Okay. So that lunch bell means that we're ready to get going. I've got the webinar recording started um, and we're going to kick off our TMN Tuesday September event. Um, as always, uh, for all participants that are joining, we like to run through our virtual meeting room etiquette first. Um, this is to make sure that we're all on the same page and we all are participating in the event uh, cooperatively today. Um, so if you are new to our WebEx system, um, we do have a help guide on our WebEx, on our uh, TMN Tuesday page. Um, if you are new here, you um, may be frustrated you're not able to unmute or share your video as a participant, but that's on purpose today. We want to make sure that our um, two guest speakers, Ernesto and Wendy, have the floor. They have the ability to share all of their experience and knowledge and these new vocabulary uh, words for us today. Um, and so they are um, uh, given that uh, option to have all of our participants muted and, um, and with their videos off so that they've got that participation or they've got that attention today. Um, but as a participant, we encourage you to participate through the chat function. Um, you should see chat moving along as folks are introducing where they are joining in from today. Um, so please uh, ask questions, answer questions, participate via the chat. Um, help Michelle, Hannah, and I as chat moderators. Um, try to use your best spelling and grammar possible today um, so that we can uh, interpret the question that you are wanting to be asked to our presenters um, and making sure that you are getting the answers that you're looking for today. Um, if you are a master naturalist, today's presentation can count as one hour of advanced training, um, either watched live as, you, as we're going today right now or as a recording if you are watching this um, after uh, to Tuesday, today, Tuesday, uh, September 10th. Um, all right, so just a few more reminders before uh, Michelle and Hannah uh, kick off the event. Um, we are almost wrapped up with our 2024 TMN Tuesday seminar series. Um, we are in September. We have three more months of TMN events. Um, our October TMN event, TMN Tuesday event, is our project fair. Um, this is our opportunity to um, showcase master naturalist projects from across the state. Um, entered through our, our project fair entry uh, portal that Hannah's going to drop in the link, uh, the link in the chat here in just a second. Those are due by this weekend. Um, so please write up your project summary with your chapter, submit that for our project fair, and be a presenter at next, to, at next month's TMN Tuesday as part of our project fair event. Um, also, some other things that are going on in October, a little bit of a busy season with the Master Naturalist program here, but we are gearing up and getting ready for our annual meeting. Um, it is in just a, a one short month period from, um, from this month, um, and we are closing registration at the end of September. So if you have not registered for the annual meeting and you are interested in learning more, participating in the annual meeting event, um, don't wait too much longer. Um, we will be closing that registration here um, by the end of the month. All right, and with that, Michelle, where are you? Oh, we can't hear you yet, though. Oh, you can't? Can you hear us now? Now we can. Okay. Now we can. <laughs> There's a little bit of delay here. Sorry. So we have Hannah and I are actually in Minnesota this week um, attending the National Alliance of Natural Resource Outreach and Service Programs annual conference. And uh, really, that's a collection of master naturalist type program coordinators from across the nation. Um, we get together to share information. Um, sit, share resources, tell each other about what's going on and what we're doing with our programs and how we can all learn from each other to improve in our own respective state programs. So Hannah and I are presenting um, from the, that location. We're at the Minnesota Valley National Wildlife Refuge today. Um, and the conference kicks off actually at one o'clock right after mm -hmm. our session. And you have more people joining from across the nation today because we have a few um, Fish and, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service employees joining us today and a couple of other Master Naturalist Program coordinators or coordinators from other programs across the state. So we're offering, we're broadcasting this session um, right here as at the National Conference as a pre-conference session for attendees at this conference too. So we're very excited about that, very excited to bring um, our TMN Tuesdays to this audience and um, 
as a reminder, what we do for all of our team on Tuesdays, uh, we ask that if you're wherever you're attending from, if you could help us uh, continue support for our team and Tuesdays and other state offerings of our master naturalist program by um, taking our little survey that we have on the screen here. Hannah's dropping the um, the link in the chat or else if you have a phone you can hover over the qr code and um, take the survey from there and just help us remain eligible for the funding that does provide um, for these events for us and if you're a match, master naturalist we remember we told you that uh, this session will last for about an hour today and um, you can report an hour of advanced training for attending this session either live or watching the recording later once it's up on our website. Um, and it, here on the screen are just some instructions for um, how to do that as a master naturalist. If you're attending live or uh, recorded, you'll report this as advanced training, up to one hour of advanced training or the time that you watch or attended today. And then um, indicate that it's for the September 2024 TMN Tuesday Spanish for Naturalists advanced training session. And coming up, um, our speakers, uh, as a reminder for today, our Spanish, our session is uh, Spanish for Master Naturalists or fan, Spanish for Naturalists. Um, this is, we've kind of incorporated it, this into one of our Be the Change offerings, but also coming up next week, starting next week, is uh, a celebration of natu National Hispanic. I can't speak today. Um, National Hispanic Heritage Month. So kicking us off um, with this TMN Tuesday in celebration of that month is our Spanish for Naturalists um, session. Uh, I mentioned where we're coming from, uh, where we're broadcasting from for you today. Again, it's the uh, from the ANROSP National Conference. We're at we are at the Minnesota Valley National Wildlife Refuge, um, and this conference is. Um, uh, what would you call it? Um, theme okay. is accent on alliances, building and sustaining program partnerships. So something the master, the Texas Master Naturalist Program is um, all about. So our speakers today are Ernesto Garcia Ortega and Wendy Anderson. Um, if you are familiar with our Texas Master Naturalist Program, you are familiar with both of these individuals. Um, Ernesto is a wildlife biologist in the Valley with uh, Texas Parks and Wildlife. He's also a chapter advisor for our chapters in the Valley. Wendy Anderson is a, our Texas Nature Trackers biologist with Texas Parks and Wildlife. Um, and she is also a Texas Master Naturalist herself. So both of them are uh, Spanish speaking um, individuals and they are, they will be presenting the information for you today. Um, they have put the entire program together. Um, they have offered this at our annual meeting in the past and it'll be a feature at this year's annual meeting also. Um, but in celebration of National Hispanic Heritage Month, we wanted to offer this as the September TMN Tuesday also. Um, next slide. I think that was it. That was it. Them. And then we can turn it over to, whoops, we'll turn it over to Ernesto and Wendy. Thank you for being here. And am I giving the uh, presenter to Wendy? Yes, there we go. Hello everyone, hello. Welcome to today's TMN Tuesday. I am Wendy Anderson and then I'm gonna be accompanied by Ernesto Garcia Ortega. We're both TPWD biologists. And for today's presentation, we're going to go over things both in English and in Spanish. We'll start off with some introductions of me and Ernesto, and I would like for y'all to introduce yourself and chat next. Um, Ernesto, Ernesto is going to talk about relevancy, basic pronunciation, and examples of how you might use Spanish in your work as a naturalist. And at the end, I will wrap up in explaining how you can continue on your education for using Spanish as a naturalist. So if you are here in chat, please introduce yourself in chat. I know you've already done so already in English, but introduce yourself like, hola, me llamo, and then put your, when, uh, put your name there, and then soy they, and then put your hometown. So I will do my introductions first. Hola, me llamo Wendy. Estudié español en Costa Rica y España. 
yo hablo español castellano, he incluido Z y vosotros. Por ejemplo, yo digo, vivís en civilización en vez de viven ustedes en civilization. Todavía estoy aprendiendo nombres comunes de animales y plantas en español. Y Ernesto. Bienvenidos todos. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Uh, so my name is Ernesto. Me llamo Ernesto. I was born and raised in Reynosa, Tamaulipas, Mexico. Yo soy nacido y criado en Reynosa, Tamaulipas, Mexico. I obtained my bachelor's degree in environmental uh, engineering at the Universidad Autónoma de Tamaulipas. Obtuve mi licenciatura en la ingeniería ambiental en la Universidad Autónoma de Tamaulipas. And I studied later on survival, habitat selection, and nesting ecology of skilled well in the Chihuahuan Desert. Uh, estudié la sobrevivencia, selección de hábitat y ecología de anidamiento de la codorniz escamosa en el desierto chihuahuense. Thanks, Ernesto. And I love to see that everyone is introducing themselves in the chat. Thank you so much. As well as introducing yourself, I would love to hear from you all. How do you see using Spanish as a master naturalist or a naturalist? And before we start talking about how to pronounce things in Spanish or vocabulary, I wanted to talk about um, cognates. So it's easy to pick up some Spanish words. They are almost identical in English and in Spanish. So for example, in English, coyote is coyote in Espanol. Animals in English is animales. Plants in, in Spanish is plantas. Na uh, natural is natural in Espanol, and local es local in Espanol. But I do want you to be cautious because there are some false cognates. So these are words that um, don't have the exact same meaning, even though they kind of sound similar. So let's start off with embarazada. You might say like, oh, you tripped and fell. Estoy embarazada, but in reality, embarazada means pregnant, not embarrassed. Or you uh, uh, might want to say, oh, I'm dirty, necesito sopa, like I need soap. But what you're saying is, I need soup. Also, um, you might want to explain where the exits are while you're giving a presentation. So you might say éxito, but éxito means success. Also similarly is fábrica, which uh, you might think might mean fabric, actually means factory. And nombre, I've heard people say nombre for number, but nombre means name. And same with delito, I don't know what you would think delito means, but it means crime. And while you are out in the world as a naturalist using Spanish, you should keep in mind that different animals and plants have different cultural significance in um, different cultures. So on the left is a picture of a black witch moth that I took by my front door. And different cultures around North America have a lot of different um, uh, superstitions about black witch moths. So there are some cultures that believe that if you have a black witch moth arriving at your front door, it means either you're being visited by a ghost or someone you may know may pass away. In other parts of North America, being visited by a black witch moth might mean you're going to win the lottery. Also, for barn owls, I would love to see a barn owl. I would be so excited if I was out in the field and I saw a barn owl. But for some people, seeing a barn owl means you're being visited by an evil witch. And I'm going to pass the presentation on to Ernesto, where he's going to introduce relevancy and pronunciation and examples. Well, hola a todos otra vez. Hello, everybody, again. 
Uh, you know, thanks to Wendy for for your or your introduction. And uh, may, Wendy made made already uh, did already some made some really good points. And uh, you know, I want to talk touch based a little bit on relevancy. You know, so a little bit ago, a while ago, Wendy asked you, you know, what do you think, or how do you think you could use the Spanish? So, uh, you know, I like looking at stats because that that portrays our, our reality. There's no there's no other way around. So uh, these stats were taken uh, from the worldpopulationreview.com. Uh, I encourage you to look that up. But this is like the state, you know, basically distribution, you know, in the United States and how every state, you know, uh, you know, what percentage of the Hispanic community it's those states are comprised of. You know, on the very top, you have New Mexico with 49.2%, Texas followed by Texas with 39.44%. So, um, you know, maybe the average, you know, within all the states is like about 25%, 20% of their current population. It's comprised by Hispanic, uh, you know, um, Hispanic community. So that tells you a lot of, you know, why we, we, we probably want to start like digging into Spanish. Yeah. So where to start? Unfortunately, there's no magic formulas, <laughs> but definitely uh, Wendy will talk about that uh, in a little bit. There's a lot of resources, but like with everything else, it, it, it is your effort. Okay. You need to put the effort uh, on it. Otherwise, you're not going to see any results. And the way I was taught, I, I learned actually uh, English uh, from private lessons uh, starting when I was like in third grade and I didn't stop till like I was in high school. Uh, but very traditional, very traditional minded uh, English teachers, you know, they were like, you need to build and memorize your vocabulary. If you don't uh, build your vocabulary, how, how do you know what word to use? So I literally had to, you know, write down thousands of thousands of uh you know just words and phrases and 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 uh and how to uh, conjugate uh you know verbs and 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 whatnot in order to kind of like have a better idea or a better understanding on what word should i use so it is it's, it is a really good idea to start uh when you are really young your your brain is more you know that has a lot of plasticity but you know it's not impossible i mean it's not impossible even if you are like you know already a grown up to start but that to me that's the best way to do it otherwise you're going to have a hard time memorizing things and you know while you're writing down these lines and phrases and and your vocabulary you know try to speak and write at the same time so you you are practicing your pronunciation at the same time and then uh, last but not least, I will I will encourage you to watch, you know, TV. Nowadays, you have a lot of platforms where you can add the, the captions on and then just start like, you know, trying to puzzle, try to get all the puzzle pieces together and see how much you can understand from that, you know, that scene and then see if that was, you know, how accurate that was. And maybe, you know, that's how you can start getting also a little more familiar with the with the words and pronunciations. And, you know, one of the other tools that I just mentioned uh, that Wendy is going to talk about later, you know, one of them is iNaturalist. That's a that's a wonderful resource for all the naturalists here that, you know, want to, you know, actually see, you know, what the, the translation for those words are. So, uh, believe it or not, even though Spanish is it's a really hard language to to learn there's there's a lot of things that you know you can practice and then they're really easy to to learn uh i i i uh i titled this survival 101 because i feel like if you know these four things you can survive on every part of the world that you know uh that where they speak in, uh, spanish so when you want to when you when you don't know how to say something you know in english you say how do you say this uh you know, you're going to say, como se dice esto? Like, and you, and <laughs> believe it or not, you know, sign language is very efficient. So it's like, how do you say this? And you point it out, you grab this and you make, you know, you, you make your war around that. And, and that helps tremendously. And then when the other person, you know, tells you like, okay, this is a pencil, then you're like, 
okay, maybe you don't even know how to write it down, but you, I mean, just by, you know, the other person pronouncing that you, you probably, you know, get your way around and, and, and repeat it and, and, and confirm that that's actually what you need. Uh, the other one is like, I need, and, and, and later on, you know, if you go and, and, and open our link that we shared previously, where you can find the vocabulary, I think this is like one of the most important phrases, you know, because I need, yo necesito, that applies for everything. It's like, I need water, yo necesito agua, I need help, yo necesito ayuda, and that's going to open a bunch of doors, okay? Uh, <clears throat> and then the other one that, you know, will allow you to get some food <laughs> is I would like to order. I would like to order beer, quiero ordenar cerveza, <laughs> I would like to order some tacos, get ordenar este, una orden de tacos. That's just basically, you know, just to ask for, for, for food mainly. Uh, and then again, you know, I always say this to my colleagues in this world. I mean, it, please and thanks open many doors. They, the, those phrases, I mean, I encourage you to keep using those because, uh, you know, nowadays I feel we have been so distant from, from this that that, that's why we close so many doors without knowing. Okay, so ba basic pronunciation. I mean, uh, there the, the beauty of Spanish to me, of course, because I was born and raised in Mexico. That's the best. That's the best language in the world, right? But realistically, uh, I like the Spanish because the way you, if you learn a word. You can probably learn a thousand words just by pronouncing one. And what I mean by that is with, with these words that 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 have the G A G U E G U I G O G U Gato Guerra Giso Gol Gustavo. Every time you find this this um uh, this this same structure, those wor those words will be pronounced the same. It's not in the, in the Spanish. We don't have double e's. We don't have double o's. And and you'll see, you know, later on, you know, that, that there are other words that you know you're like, oh, okay, I didn't know that. That's how you can you know pronounce it. But the beauty is like once you learn it, you know that that applies almost to every word. Uh, however, the words with g e G I G U I with the little dots, the dieres, las dieresis on top of the U, they they spell a little a little different. So for example, every time you have a G followed by an E, it's always gonna sign sound G. Okay, it doesn't matter what you're what you're spelling, it's always gonna be G. So a really basic uh, exercise you know uh that i remember from school like growing up you know in elementary school it was like they will make you they will make kids pronounce ga ge gi go gu ka, and then he he ko ku okay because once you learn those you will you will you will know how to pronounce the rest you don't have to necessarily learn how to pronounce thousand words you know, and like, like you can see it here, you know, Gilberto, it's always going to be like, okay, like almost like a cat, like, and then Gato, it's like, okay. And then <laughs> this is where it starts like getting a little tricky, you know, also the words with ha, he, he, ho, who, like J, A, J, E, J, I, J, O, and J, U, always going to sound like, okay. So if you learn your vowels, Okay, you know that every time you have a J, you just follow it by the vowel immediately. So every time you find a vowel, A, E, I, O, U, A, they are always going to sound the same. So Jalisco, Jerarquía, Jitomate, Joven, Julio, they will not change at all. And, and this one, it's like similar to Greek. Okay, it's a little more pronounced, a little more tough at the end, but uh, every time you find a GR, it's gonna sound like grig, 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 like grapa, granjeno, grua, gravar. You see how they all sound about the same? 
Okay, next slide. And again, you know, of course, you need to, you know, know your vowels, but the vowels, the, the accents will only be used on vowels only. Okay, I really like these ones because uh, when I was uh, learning English and when I came to the States to start my master's and, and started working for Texas Parsons Wildlife, I, I wouldn't tell the difference, you know, I was like B and V. And then uh, there was a guy that he was, his name was Vince, okay? So I would always say, hey, yeah, Vince. And they were like, no, it's like Vince, it's not Vince. And I'm like, that sounds the same. <laughs> what are you talking about? I thought they were making fun of me. Well, so in reality, in Spanish, they sound the same. And I, and I, and, and, and I want you to practice this. Vaticano, veloz, vivíparo, volcán, vuelo. Can you tell the difference if I say Batman, Benito, bisabuelo, boda, and burro? No, not at all. So again, that's one of the beauties of like, once you learn that, it will all sound the same. And it doesn't even matter if you don't know how to, uh, if you don't know if that word goes with V or B, but they will all sound the same. That's all you gotta, you know, care about. And another another treasure of our, you know, beautiful Spanish is <laughs> all H are silent if they are not, uh, if they are not together with a C. If they are not, I'm sorry, I made a mistake here. Not, not followed by by C. It's like if C are, if C if there's a C before the H, it will be it will be silent. But the the exceptions to the rule to this rule it's like when after a c there's an h it always sounds like ch -ch 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 -ch. like chachalaca chapultepec acha acha is a really good example like axe okay acha it's axe but acha so the h like the first h on acha it's not followed by a, by a, by, well, there's not a C before the H. So the first H is silent, but like shortly after there's a C and an H, and then that's how you need to pronounce it. Like a cha. Okay. Echo. That's again, this, the first H are all silent. And then whereas like the other ones on like Chapultepec, Mapache, Chiapas, macho, churro. You can do the same exercise that I that I explained you before. Cha, che, chi, cho, chu. Okay. Once you have that down, you're good. Okay. Next slide. Again, uh, all our vowels will sound uh, the same. Doesn't matter where you find them in within a word. And I, the eyes are all gonna sound like a uh, like. I'm sorry. Yeah, so our eyes in Spanish, they all sound like e, like your e's, okay? So it's like iglesia, hidalgo, uh, interruptor, okay? So it doesn't matter. You're not gonna ever find like a double double I, okay? So eyes are always gonna sound like e, 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 e. Instituto, Islandia, Isaac. There you go. Okay, so J's again, they all gonna sound like <laughs> okay, Jalisco, Jerarquia, they're very guttural. Yeah, next slide. Okay, so the L's are very similar to what your L sounds in English, but if it's a double L, it will it will sound like a G. Okay, like sh, like llave, lleno, a G. Cabello, hair, lluvia, rain. Again, we always uh, practice this when we were kids, like ja, je, ji, jo, ju. Okay, so maybe you know, additionally, uh, additional to your to your vocabulary, uh, you know, building your vocabulary, you know, maybe you can write down this like ga ge gi go gu ha he hi ho hu cha che chi cho chu ja je ji jo ju, and you know, the last one, la, le, li, lo, lu, ladron, lechuga, lettuce, um, uh, licuado, smoothie, locomotora, train, loose, light. Okay, so cues, if they are, they are only used, 
before an E and an I, and then followed by a silent U. What I mean by that is like words such as Enrique, you know, like the U doesn't have any sound, okay? And queso, the same, quesadilla, quiero, quien, química. Okay, so the R's, that's the big struggle with, with, the, with the English uh, speaking uh, community. So the best way that I, the, the best trick that I came up with, with my friends in, in Alpine when I was living with them was uh, try to stick your tongue on, your, uh, on, on, on the top of your mouth and then just try to push air through it like, okay, like, you know, blow air while maintaining your thumb on the, on the palate. And that's how you will be able to pronounce your R's better. better. But again, you know, uh, you should not be worried too much about, you know, whether that R is like a perfect R, you know, as long as you kind of like, you know, kind of like give it the, the tone that people will understand, you know, what you're, tr what you're trying to say. Okay, so S and Z, okay. Sacate, Zelandia, Sigoto, Sopilote, Surdo. They all sound a little different than S's. Okay, they have more like a more pronounced sound at the at the very beginning, whereas like sal, selenio, sierra, sonora, sur, they are more like soft. Okay, maybe that's more a little more more similar to your um, to the to the B and V. Okay, it's got a a, a more like clear dif there's a more clear difference between S and Z. Okay, so use uh, like before, after they are, uh, you know, spell, uh, after they are, uh, if they are after uh, uh, the, the, the letter Q, they, they're all going to be silent. Okay, but they are going to be pronounced if they have the little dots, they're called dieresis in Spanish, uh, such as like pinguino. Okay, so you pronounce like, you remember I told you about like the gage gigogu? That's where you use this. So, pinguino, guero, bilingüe, lingüística, cigüeña. And they're going to sound uh, just completely as and you if they are at the, at, the, at the beginning, such as uva, utero, urbano, utilidad, ultra. Okay, so the X, they're a little more complicated. So, there's a, just a few words in Spanish that have the X. Uh, it's going to sound like a KS if it's between vowels or at the end of a word, such as like exigir, like x, 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 exigir, exagerar, phoenix. Okay. Uh, they are going to sound like KS or S if it's at the end of a syllable and it's followed by a consonant, such as like expresar, contexto, excusa. And they're also gonna sound like a nest if the first letter, if it's the first letter or or uh, or a word, xenophobia. You see, like there's no like a real KS sound like there. Sochi and cirrhosis. They they sound more like a like a C, okay, instead of like a KS or S. They are gonna sound like C if it's at the, the if it's the first letter first letter of a word. But <laughs> They all kind of sound. They also can. They also can sound like an H, with only a few words, such as Jimena, Mexico, Texas, Oaxaca, Quijote. Your your age, not not our age. And okay, the whites, the, the white, they all gonna sound like uh, like a soft G. Doesn't matter where you find it. So yeah, yeah, yi, yo, you. That's the other. That's the other exercise that we grew up with as kids. Ayala, yegua, rayita, yoda, yucatán. So you guys can practice with this, okay? Uh, you know, try to try to uh, try to pronounce that and see if you can get it right. Three javelinas were looking for water. Only one found it. Okay, so. 
tres jabalíes estaban buscando agua, solo uno la encontró. And you know, you can come up with your own with your own methods. There's not a you know magic recipe for it. The main thing is like trying and don't be embarrassed of you know, you know, attempting to pronounce a word and 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 talk to your peers or you know try to talk to your friends or your family. I mean, this is this is basically the whole secret of you know any any language. Nowadays we have you know Babel and other apps that I don't really know what how they they teach people you know how to learn a new language, but I feel like. It is really critical to to you know try. Yeah, so like this one, you know, Bob White Quail is colorniz norteña. Okay, so perch is perchada, and post is the el poste de la cerca. So una colorniz norteña está perchada en el poste de la cerca. You know, try try with try with short short phrases first, and then maybe start moving on later once you're more familiar with the vocabulary and the pronunciation. Try to make a, a bigger sentence or or, or a paragraph. Uh, we have a, here another example: a white-tailed deer bug is running through the brush. Un venado, a white-tailed deer, cola blanca, is running is through the brush a través del monte o matorral. And then uh, you can also start like maybe looking at you know. Uh, wildlife and ecological, you know, vocabulary words such as like Tamaulipan, torn scrub forest. Sometimes you will not find the literal translation, but that's how we we came up with, or the translation we came up with in Mexico. It's Matorral Espinoso Tamaulipeco. Uh, then Gulf Prairies and Marshes, Matorrales Costeros del Golfo de Mexico. That's like close to Sao Padre Island. And with that, thank you for your attention. And I will uh, I will leave it to to Wendy to keep going with your continue with your presentation. Thank you. Thanks. So if you are like me and you want to learn more Spanish, I'm gonna go over avenues for you to learn Spanish so you can use it in your work as a naturalist. So if you are an iNaturalist user like me, um, there is a way for you to change the Seek app into Spanish. So you can practice your Spanish while using the user-friendly Seek app. So I don't, we'll see if this YouTube video will work, but you can go into the menu button for Seek and you go into settings of the app. And you can change the app language there into Spanish if you want to give yourself a fun challenge to learn Spanish names for plants and animals. And it'll change the whole app into Spanish. You can also instead change the iNaturalist.org to just include common names in English in Spanish. So you would do that in your account settings under content and display. And so if you were to turn on displaying both English and Spanish common names, this is what it would look like. So instead of just saying Northern Cardinal, it would put Northern Cardinal and Cardinal Rojo. And you can learn the common names of um, the different uh, flora and fauna of your state. And as I saw some people were talking about in chat about a Translate app, I use Google Translate. It's available on Apple and Android and in the browser. You can do basic text translation. So you can type in, how do I say my name is Wendy? And it can translate it into Spanish and any other languages. If you download the app, it can do text translation through your camera. It can also live transcribe, so you can have it open and live transcribe what you're saying into another language, and then have someone else speak in another language and transcribe that directly into English as they're talking. You can also use Google Docs to translate documents and websites. So I talked about how you can use the Google Translate camera to live translate text in your camera. So this is what it would look like if you were using that to translate this sign into Spanish. 
So this is how it would look like if you were doing the live transcribing. This is very helpful for encounters in the field. Maybe you're not comfortable yet having a conversation, but you need to communicate with someone. This would be a great way to be able to speak to each other. With Google Doc, you can translate what you typed in English into another language like Spanish by going and opening your document into Google Doc, going to Tools, and selecting Translate Document, and then selecting the language. If you like and are encouraged by a gamified version of learning, I can recommend the Duolingo app, which is available on Apple, Android, and in the browser. It is a free gamified language learning application with options to pay a premium price to um, use it. There's 30 plus languages, including Spanish, French, and also Klingon and High Valyrian from Game of Thrones if you uh, want a fun little challenge. This also provides fun bite-sized lessons for you to tackle every single day. If you're in chat and if you have a Duolingo streak, please share your streak right now. Duolingo will also improve your vocabulary. And something recently I have um, found out is that um, whatever artificial intelligence you use, you can use it for conversational Spanish rather than just translating, my name is Wendy, you can say, ¿Cómo estás? ¿Cuáles son los animales que viven en Texas? And it will respond to you as if it were a conversation in Spanish. And I wanted to highlight that, um, oh, the circle went a little off, but um, there's a microphone in the bottom right corner so you can actually practice speaking to these different AI. Also, you can view um, species profiles on Wikipedia in Spanish. So this is the coyote profile on Wikipedia and you can translate, or sorry, you can view this page in Spanish. So this is the page in English and when I put it on the Spanish page, it displays the information in Spanish. Additionally, if you have a PowerPoint presentation like the one I'm using right now, you can highlight text and translate it within the app. So if you are already have a presentation and you want to um, translate it all into Spanish, you can translate that into Spanish through Microsoft PowerPoint. And outside of these apps and documents, there's a lot of resources available for you. Project WILD, which is a um, program by the Association of Fish and Wildlife Agencies, has recently published a, a book for um, teachers to provide Spanish language, uh, early childhood education um, about nature and the world around them. Creciendo WILD is all in Spanish and it will provide um, programs, lessons, activities, and um, all sorts of things to learn Spanish in a natural context. I wanted to also suggest you create a Spanish affinity group in your chapter. If you're a part of the North Texas Master Naturalists and are in that affinity group that has since started up in the last year, I would love for you to say what y'all do in chat, what have you been doing over the last year, what do you enjoy about it, so maybe you can encourage others here in chat to make a Spanish affinity group in your chapter. If you make a Spanish affinity group in your Master Naturalist chapter, you can maybe meet monthly together for Spanish-only hikes or lunches. You can translate materials into Spanish together. You can set up Spanish only outreach events and you can make Spanish bird checklists for your local park. So this is a, from a park I went to in Indiana. They took the, the bird checklist and translated them into the common names of Spanish. So this would be something that you could do for your local park. If you're joining us at the annual meeting in October and you want to hear this presentation again, um, with some more information and another speaker, please join us on Saturday, October 26th at 11.30 a.m. We will be accompanied by another presenter, Tanya Pena, who is in chat. She is um, a biologist for Texas Parks and Wildlife. And then following that presentation on Saturday, 
at the annual meeting that dinner that evening, you can join me and other Spanish speakers of all levels at a table where we will only speak Spanish. It seems intimidating, but you can do it. So I want to ask you all who are here attending today, what is your plan for continuing your language journey? Are you interested in uh, studying it solo through Duolingo? Um, are you interested in hosting uh, Spanish interest groups with your chapters? Um, are you gonna join us at the TMN annual meeting Spanish language table? Are you going to host education and outreach in Spanish, or maybe even immerse yourself in the Spanish language by traveling abroad? I would love to hear you respond in chat. Like all of our presentations, I want to provide this voluntary survey um, to you so you can um, uh, help us continue to get funding for programs like this. And I wanted to thank you for your participation and I offer the next 15 minutes for opportunities for questions. And I wanna hear your stories and um, your experiences of using nature, of using Spanish out in the field, um, whether it's as a biologist, a naturalist, or with your family and friends. You can find Ernesto and I on iNaturalist. My username is Wendelia on iNaturalist, and Ernesto is Edgar. 0179 on a naturalist. You're welcome to reach out to us for any question, advice, and suggestions. And um, we will provide all of these slides in the TMN Tuesday um, resources, as well as all of the links for the resources I provided at the end. So I wanted to take this opportunity and thank y'all and answer some of your questions. Thank you so much, Wendy and Ernesto. Ernesto. Um, there's been a lot of chatter in the, the chat, a lot of back and forth, and some folks are answering uh, questions for everyone, for others, which is great, um, and comparing some of their uh, Duolingo stats. I think the highest that I saw was a 700 plus day streak on Duolingo. Um, so fun to get to see, uh, to see that. Um, so let me see if I can find some questions. Um, as, as folks are, are sharing kudos in the chat right now and sharing some of their travel plans, sharing their um, want to get back involved with Duolingo or get more involved with um, some of the uh, Spanish affinity groups within their chapter. Um, let me see if I can find some questions. I think everybody's just excited. They want to get started. Oh my gosh, there's a 2000 day streak in Duolingo, um, but in French, but that's still, that's an impressive commitment. <laughs> wow. um, Hannah, are you seeing any questions? There's just a lot of folks sharing resources, which is wonderful. As far as I can see, I think, um, can y'all hear me? There we go. As yes, far as I can see, I think most have been answered as we've gone along. Um, but this has been an awesome presentation. Thank y'all. Thank you. Oh, Wendy, when did you start learning Spanish? That's a question that just came up. Oh, I started learning Spanish probably in um, 2010. And so, of course, when I went to school, I had to take a language to fulfill my requirements. And I just ended up stumbling into Spanish and I ended up loving it. And um, I studied abroad in Spain. And through this experience, I was able to get a double major in biology and Spanish. So I really did not start learning Spanish until I was, I think, 20 years old. Yeah, guys. So somebody was saying that you know the the Spanish from uh, Spain and, and the the Spanish from Mexico is different. Absolutely, but there are a lot of similarities because you know Mexican Spanish comes from Spain Spanish, right? So there are words that might not uh, uh, 
mean the same, but that 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 will still allow you to you know go there and you know survive. You know, uh, I have a friend that you know again was born and raised in Mexico. He's now doing a internship over in Zaragoza. Fine. I mean, there are words you know that are different that mean a little you know different connotation, but don't expect to have like a you know a thousand words that are just completely different now that's not how it works the presentation though it's it's faster and it's like you know exactly like the, exactly like wendy just said it at, at the very you know like oh yes hijo como estas saludos you know so uh, but and then uh, there was another person mentioning that To add to the to your vocabulary, the the you know adjectives and, and pronouns, and all that, absolutely. You know, you don't have idea. You don't have an idea how how many words I I, I wrote. You know, repetition is key. And and what I mean by vocabulary, I mean I mean everything. I mean, you know, uh, you know words, uh, verbs, like adjectives, pronouns. I mean everything so that's why i feel like the most practical way to, to learn them there's no other way around it there's an interesting comment in the chat from susan susan mentions um her um her want to have the right pronunciation but her texas accent or maybe her th a thick southern accent changing the pronunciation um, are there any advice or tips or tricks that y'all have when learning pronunciation of words um, and accommodating maybe some of those uh, drawls that some of us might have uh, here in Texas? I mean, my advice will be to learn the vowels first and then concept. I mean, it, you, you've got to start from, from basics and, and the basics is learn the whole of it from scratch. You know, because that's how you will know how to pronounce those words. So mm -hmm. You have to learn like uh, A, B, C, D, E, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, and so on. Because you keep, you know, pulling that alphabet from from the English uh, from the English language is not gonna is not necessarily gonna work out the same. You know, there there might be some pronunciations that will be the same, but in reality, is like. I guess one of the challenges is you. When I was taking private lessons, when they were teaching me English, they would tell me to stop thinking in Spanish, and I was like, "No, how how could I?" Do that? <laughs> if you tell that to an eight-year-old kid, I mean that's impossible. And I never got the point. I never got the point across to I was like maybe in in, uh, in college. You know, or when I actually started like using English on, on a daily basis, that's when I understood that I had to stop thinking in Spanish and I had to start thinking in English. And I I got the point. The same thing here is like you gotta start, you gotta stop, you gotta stop thinking in, in English and start thinking in Spanish. It's real difficult. I mean, you you I think realistically your brain is always trying to you know, process information, look back and forth. But at some point, you know, once you get proficient, you will just start like, you know, not even thinking about it. And then just like, you know, saying, saying words as like you already knew them, you know, since like you were a kid. But to get to that point, <laughs> you need to, you need to know your vocabulary. Uh, so, but don't get discouraged. Pra practice makes perfect, so. Yes. And I also wanted to add on to that, that um, I uh, discourage anyone to think um, that they have to have perfect pronunciation in order to even start using Spanish in your work as a naturalist. Do not make perfect the enemy of good. Um, even if you have a really strong drawl, please practice Spanish. And if you stumble over words, laugh. And it's a way to build a, a camaraderie with whoever you're speaking with. And we're all learning this together. So um, 
I love that I love it when people um, take that step and are brave and can try to speak a language that they did not grow up with. Um, it shows real effort and bravery on, on your part. That's all I have to say about that. Um, I did find a question in the chat for Ernesto, if you would like to uh, answer this one. Um, does the special you with the umlaut, those two little dots above it, ever show up when it's not after a G? No. Okay. Easy answer. Not not in real Spanish. Uh, and what I mean by that is like there might be some indigenous languages that might have a U at the beginning of a word, and they might have those little dots, but that's not Spanish. That might be Nahuatl or Zapoteca or any other one of the many native languages that we have. Well, that we still have in Mexico, but not not in not in uh, Spanish, you know. So, no, you would never find that if it's not on a U and then after a, after a G. Great. Another question for Ernesto is: Do you have a favorite Tex-Mex word or favorite Tex-Mex words? I saw that. Thank you, Sam, for putting me in the spot again. Uh, I don't know. I'm I'm trying to think. Um, a word that combines Tex-Mex. Oh man, I don't know. Uh, well, I mean, so we we have a lot of things like in Mexico that they're still pronounced like the same way they are pronounced in, in English. You know. Uh, uh, let me let me let me let me think. Um, uh, wow. Well, like. Um, like Google, I mean, a lot of people say goggling, right? But that's that's not that's not it. Uh, so it should be like Google, right? I mean, yeah. For some reason, I can think of anything else. Um, but okay, so there are there are there are words, you know, for you all naturalists, that they are actually those words are are the they come from the Nahuatl or like ancient like Mexico's and uh, native languages such as uh mesquite okay so is so if we will be strict about the pronunciation it's not mesquite okay because mesquite comes from like Nahuatl but it's mesquitl the same for like wisach is not wisach is wisache the same thing for for coyote is not coyote or coyote is coyote because the the word the word comes from coyote which means howling dog uh and there are many words like that that you know the the, the real word come came from not even spanish you know but from those ancient cultures I do want to provide one other resource that I did not mention. Um, I have, I'll be bringing this to the Master Naturalist meeting. It's a giant kids book that just talks about El Rio de Animal, the world of animals. And it's just every animal you can think of in Spanish. And it's a really fun book to look through and just learn the different names of animals from around the world. But someone asked in chat, what is the best way or channel to learn um, common word, the common words for plants and animals in Spanish. And I would lean heavily on the INAT, iNaturalist for that, which will have um, different regional um, common names for the different animals. And I think on that note, I think we have time for one more question. And there was one saying that they learn a lot through videos. And they were wondering if either of y'all had any YouTube channels that had videos kind of catering to what master naturalists do, where they could help learn some of those common words. Um, Ernesto, do you have any favorite uh, YouTube channels or videos? or documentaries that you've watched in Spanish? Uh, well, I mean, not really. My best advice is maybe try to watch the, uh, the what's this famous guy? Uh, David Ottenborough from like Planet Blue or Blue Planet. Those are really maybe good resources for you to start learning a really, uh, you know, a little more vocabulary, you know, uh, like wildlife vocabulary, but no, not really. 
I think that's an excellent suggestion. Um, and a, a, another resource that was shared in the chat was um, if you're wanting to just get started putting your um, subtitles on in Spanish so that you can see the words as you're hearing them as well um, so that you are creating both a, a written and a listen to um, experience um, as you're watching those videos. Um, with that, I want to say thank you, Wendy and Ernesto, so very much um, for your time, for your experience, your passion, uh, and your willingness to share this both uh, today and then also again at the annual meeting. Uh, we're looking forward to having you both in October in San Marcos. Um, and thank you for all of our master naturalists, both near and far, that are joining us from around the country. Um, thank you guys so much. And uh, again, those resources will be on our website. Um, we will have the links that Wendy shared, the slides, um, as well as today's recording uh, will be on the website by the end of the day today. And with that, thank you guys so much. Um, have a wonderful week. Thank you all. Thank you.